All right, everyone, welcome to this session of the Demand Gen Summit. Today, um, for this session, I'm joined by Scott Logan, um, Vice President of Marketing at Chronologic. Scott, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited for this. Um, we've got a really interesting topic. Um, really, like, how do you, and we're going to get into is how do you get to accepted meetings um, rather than just MQLs you're delivering to the sales team? Um, big gap, you know, like MQL to, to a real meeting, not always the easiest thing to do, uh, but you have a method for helping us to, uh, and Chronologic does, to solve this problem. So I'll let you give a little more background and just introduce your philosophy on it. Yeah, thanks. And it is a, a unique problem that we have solutions for, uh, but it's just not as efficient or scalable as we want. And yep. it kind of boils down to the fact that demand gen marketers and, and marketing teams are not really in control of their own destiny, where we still have to pass over leads to sales teams in order to create the opportunities that we're pushing. I mean, some marketing teams have their own SDR teams, which is fantastic. That's one step closer. Yeah. The time and the processes that are in place still aren't as efficient as we need to get as much ROI as quick as we need out of uh, the investment being made by the company. Yeah, um, I agree The the move towards marketing, having their own SDR or BDR team, uh, I think it's great and it helps you stay a little more aligned because, you know, for marketing, you're usually bonused off of those opportunities that you do, that the sales team delivers and having a little more control over that's great. So how do you solve the gap between when that SDR team isn't part of marketing? It's top part of sales. You're handing these, these SQL, these MQLs, SQLs, whatever your organization wants to call them off and just, you know, hoping they do their job. Yeah. And, just a couple seconds ago, you raised a good point that demand gen teams are now being bonused in gold off of the opportunity creation and the yeah. pipeline associated with it. And any wins that come across that are sourced or influenced, however you've set it up. Uh, yep. And we no longer are even gold in, in many cases, and certainly on demand gen teams are a little bit more advanced uh, off of leads and MQLs and you know, hitting an open rate metric, like those types of things yeah. have gone in the past because the ultimate goal is the opportunity. So if one campaign converts very high with very low volume, that's going to be way different and could skew your numbers, uh, even though the end result is better. So uh, we're always focused on the end. But the problem, even if your SDR team lies in marketing, is that we're still kind of focused on those leading indicators. We're looking at how many calls did you make today? How many emails did you go out today? Uh, how many conversations were you in today? And, and how long were the conversations? I mean, a lot of those things are still good to look at, but we're still bonusing and goaling and, and on a daily basis, looking at those in terms of, are you a winner? Or are you not uh, based on that? And yep. what we really need to do is the same thing where we're looking at the end result, the opportunity, which for sure SDR teams are looking at, uh, but the problem is, is the time it takes to get to that point is still just far too long. Yeah, no, I, I agree. You know, it's a mindset to go back to what you were pointing out is, you know, we have all these activities in marketing we're tracking, you know, email sends, ads, you know, website traffic. Um, and even with our own team, we've made the shift that the one metric we really care about for marketing is the pipeline they deliver to sales. And it's been a little bit of a mindset change for them where, they're not as like they should still be focused on those things. But personally, like I don't even really care what the website conversion rate is if the pipeline being delivered is large enough to support the sales team and our goals. Um, so when you are when you've got this in between, you know, you're going to hand this off to sales and you've got to get there quickly, you know, speed to lead. We all know know the research. We know getting a hold of people right away, getting those meetings helps to solve, helps to, you know, get them in pipeline quickly while you're top of mind. Um, what's the best way for us to, uh, to get aligned and make sure that we're doing this? Yeah. So let's break what you said down a little bit. Uh, first is you're looking at the, um, at the opportunities created by the SDR team. Why opportunity creation 
and absolutely pipeline are probably yeah, not the I best for us to align on for sales and sales development. I know that sounds weird. I still okay. say track it, but it's probably not your most important metric because opportunities take weeks to develop yeah. because uh -huh. you have to sort through all those leads. If you hand over a hundred leads yeah. to a sales dev team or rep, that's actually a 1000 task to-do list you've handed them. And if you increase volume or you have a larger team or you have a really great event, uh, you've handed them a thousand leads to follow up on. You've actually just handed them. If you have like, say for instance, 10, 10 activities over the course of 14 days, a 10,000 task to-do list. Yeah. No wonder <laughs> it's so hard to hit SLAs and their heads are spinning trying to uh, get through everything and qualify all those leads and make sure they hit their daily SLAs, but it's actually leaving them less time to do quality discovery. And it's harder, even with a sales engagement tool, to prioritize to get that, what you mentioned a second ago, that's yep. to lead. And it's not really a, a leading indicator. We're always looking at a lagging indicator. And so yeah. what we're finding uh, is the metric to join the teams together is the actual demo meeting book. Uh, within a matter of days, typically, on a highly successful campaign, so you have great coverage, the meeting is what happens right away. And it may get pushed, it may get bumped, but you know you're going to have a discovery call with someone. What you can also do is forecast off of that based on your meeting to opportunity conversion rate or discovery call or demo to opportunity creation rate, see what's gonna happen one to two to three weeks out because a meeting is date stamped. So you can see uh, per your team, per your rep, per your uh, just entire company, how many of those meetings you have booked out in the future and how successful each team or each rep is. Uh, and, and as far as how many meetings they have to generate, how many opportunities they have to generate pipeline uh, and how many at bats are gonna have coming forward. Yeah, I, I agree that that would make sense to, to start focusing on those meetings held. But so how do you book these meetings faster in today's process? Like we already, you know, for an inbound lead using like a product like our own, people can book the meeting with the sales team right off the website. Now they've got to, you know, say, hey, I want to book a meeting and do this. Um, for those people that aren't just hand raisers um, and willing to book the meeting right off the site, what do you do to get that meeting on the on the books faster? Yeah, yeah. So here you're like, uh, no duh, because there are uh, there's one way to get those meetings on the book. Uh, that's a great leading indicator. You probably agree with that, and yep. it's more predictable. You probably agree with that at this point. Uh, you can set it up in in your CRM that way, or even use uh, a tool to do that. But you still have to chase those leads. Uh, yep. What we're saying is you actually don't need to chase those leads because that's what slows down the process. And that's why our conversion rates are lower than we want, uh, except for the first you know, 10% of everybody's lead list probably. And what we're saying is to take a calendar first approach. Uh, what a calendar first approach is, is actually sending out the meeting invite as the first step of the process. You send a meeting invite that's not just blank, uh, not just that has a uh, Billy and Scott intro on it. It has yeah. a subject line with the context of why you're meeting. So typically uh, an SDR gets a lead from a webinar or a trade show or a demo request or any number of sources that you've briefed them on. And that's the context of that uh, invite. The invite then has a thought out agenda as to what are we going to talk about? Uh, what hot take or challenge uh, am I going to present you with? And then what's going to be your takeaway? What are you going to benefit from whether or not you continue to have discussions with me or not? It should be present there. We also accompany that with an email drawing attention to that meeting that just pumped on their calendar uh, to let them know the detail of the, con of the context of that call. And the first thing everybody tells me when we uh, say that is that's way too presumptuous. That's yeah. That's we're going on a we're you know it's asking for marriage before we even gone on a date we don't even know well maybe if you're the salesperson saying that but this is a demand gen conference and demand gen summit and we spend a lot of time figuring out what is our TAM 
what is our ideal customer profile? Yep. How much intent is there? How much engagement is there? And based on that, we are willing to give a phone number to somebody to call an executive person. So a junior SDR calls an executive buyer in the middle of their day and tries to have the best 37 second pitch in order to get them into a meeting and qualify them. And that person's not even on the, in the right mindset. You probably have a local presence. It probably tricks them into thinking it's their daycare calling and they don't even know what they're getting into and they're already working on something else. So it's not a great environment to create value in, in the first place. And with an email, there's so many firewalls and so many other ways that that email message could get skipped or missed or the copy gets changed by the sales rep based on whatever experience they had in marketing like you should not have done that so um, <laughs> when you send the calendar invite it avoids spam filters the it can be uh yeah so that that was something i wanted to ask you do you does a calendar invite avoid the spam filters altogether yeah most of the time what we're seeing is that you won't get caught in the spam filter where an email will it also even yeah. more importantly it shows up on someone's calendar with a little bit different of intention. You're like, hmm, yeah. let me actually take a look at this meeting. And if it's blank, like most people's experiences, then it's going to be thrown in the garbage and you're going to look stupid. But if it yep. has context and it's sent right when that engagement happens. So if you use a, a calendar automation platform like ours, it can be triggered immediately. Or if you do it manually, you send it uh, as fast as possible. Now you're getting complete coverage with the ultimate intent signal first up front all this okay. you do is to get a yes and they already know before you talk to the rep if they're in the market to buy and because their business isn't going to change immediately overnight they already know if it's in the solution yep. and you don't have to have a, a rep doing the job the part of their job they hate the least over and over and over and wasting time when they could just have that meeting accepted within a matter of minutes of sending out some meeting invites. And that intent signal is a one click for them and very little to no work on the behalf of the rep. And it just saves everybody uh, the poor experience of being lead chased and yep. the good experience in the, in the first conversation being a structured thought out with the right resources maybe with a sales engineer if you need to uh, in that first discovery call where they can actually decide whether or not to continue with you. Okay. All right. I've got a couple questions. I want to dig in on, on how you do this process really well for you. Um, so you'd mentioned you don't just send a calendar invite. You've got an agenda why we're doing it. Um, you know, you guys have been doing this for a while. Are there any best practices if I'm putting this together? I'm going to try this approach. Like, you know, we're hosting a webinar. Everyone who signs up for this webinar that looks like they fit, you know, our buyer profile, we're going to try it with. What what would you suggest we do as we're putting together these calendar invites? Yeah. Uh, going back to the thing we've all known forever, speed to lead within the first five minutes is when you want to have this done. Uh, yep. If you have a tool that uh, does this like fun logic, then you just use the tool. But if you don't uh, or don't yet, then what you do is it's a lot easier to structure the top, most engaged, most ideal prospects that you have uh, to have this invite. So you, you, you could even have a, a canned, if you use Outlook and ICS thing already built out, the rep just puts in their, the person and it comes from them and now you're having that level of intent happen right when the webinar ends and it's from the rep and it has the context of hey you just attended a webinar on say you sell it security solutions it cybersecurity. i'm offering a cyber security assessment as the first step which mm -hmm. you know, most it security platforms have or whatever your best foot forward on that introductory call is you're offering them something don't just say it's an intro or yeah. if it's a demo, that's fine. If what you talked about aligns with your solution, then that's great too. But it should yeah. offer them something and have the context of why they're getting it, uh, whether it be right after a piece of content was downloaded or what have you. And yep. now they know why they're meeting and it seems much more thought out. Yeah, I've, I've gotten these before where it's not 
it's just like, hey, here's an intro call to us. You know, I signed up for a webinar or downloaded something. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to decline this. But actually, now that we're talking about this, I've had this. Um, I've received it where they've done it well. Like, like it's OK. Here is the um, man. I'm trying to remember what the company was. I didn't end up buying, but I took the call and, and had the meeting and it just wasn't a fit at the time. Uh, but everything was mapped out. Here's why we're getting on the phone. It was like 15 minutes, so not a ton of time. But what kind of acceptance rates do you guys typically get with these? Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll go down two paths that you just discussed on. Acceptance rates we're finding that if you propose it three to seven-ish days out, uh, then we're seeing 80 from our customers, 80% plus acceptance rate. Uh, if they're qualified, if they've had engagement, we don't suggest this is just they're showing some level of intent or yeah. they're cold. Um, they should be the same qualifications that you have for an SDR to call them out of the blue and interrupt their day. That same yep. level of uh, qualification should go for this. And it really, in many cases, uh, and I'll go through some use cases here, it's not just double, it's like triple or quadruple the amount of meetings you can book in a serious fraction of the time. The goal is to remove the call blocks, remove your prospecting time out of your calendar and replace them with these discovery calls and demos. And there's it really spans a whole funnel. So we're talking a lot about top of funnel. But if you're a customer marketer, it's the expansion opportunities. It's a cross sell opportunities. It's ghosted demos, ghosted leads. Uh, if you yeah. have those that you want to try it on, it works really well because typically maybe like with us working at home, you got a kid here. You're like, oh, my four year old's throwing a tantrum. Ah, it's just a discovery <laughs> call. I'll cancel that one so I could tend to my family for just a yeah. second and, and get this kid settled. But you were still interested. But the, the sales rep is like, oh, they didn't show up. They must not want it. And then you're calling and emailing, trying to schedule a time again. Here's a link. Book on my calendar. Asking them to book on you for you so you don't have to do it. And fill out a form again. Like all this back and forth. Just send them a new calendar invite for a new time. You don't really know that they didn't want that. Um, you have to cross sell products all the time. Hey, we know that this set of customers that have this requirement and this ICP typically also buy this and you have a value statement for that. Yeah. That be a, a calendar first campaign. It doesn't have to be just the top of the funnel and typically bottom of the funnel. Uh, for those of you who are trying to grow that middle of the funnel pipeline that you've generated, this is a fantastic tactic to, uh, to push those down deeper into a win. Awesome, man. I, I love the idea. I mean, we got to be trying new things like the, Hey, you know, I filled out a form, SDR calls me back, emails me, you know, that's been, we've been using that for a while and it works to a certain degree, but it doesn't mean it's the perfect solution. And so I love this idea. Um, is there anything else before, before we wrap up that, uh, that we should hit on this topic? Yeah, I think just there's a few takeaways here. Uh, align with your sales dev team on the meeting and start to track your meetings. If you have to create a custom object or just utilize what's already there in your activity to create a specific um, activity type in your CRM that has a date stamp on it, start tracking that. Now you're going to be able to see how well a campaign did right away instead of weeks. So within days or a week, you can now report back to that. How did last week's campaign go with it actually has this many meetings scheduled for the future instead of we're making calls, we're making emails, no opportunities yet. You're like, Too yeah. fast. of course, there's no opportunities yet. But that's really bad for a marketer to have to report back on. So start for sure on that. So you have something tangible that you can actually predict some pipeline with. Uh, the second thing is try a few use cases of, of calendar first to try and get more of those meetings on the calendars quicker. Look at your best leads, your best conversion, uh, and, and those are going to convert no matter what uh, with your hottest leads and your hottest events and your cross sell, upsell customer campaigns. So take all the busy work away from those, use calendar first, and then use your engagement tools for the harder to get stuff that you're going to have to create more context with, with a phone call or something. And, and, and then there'll be more time for that. Uh, Many of your top reps at your companies probably have already done this in the past. Uh, and then third, I'll just say, uh, if you want to be able to do it at scale, then go ahead and contact Chronologic and we can help you. Okay. 
Awesome, Scott. Appreciate you sharing the knowledge and being part of the Demand Gen Summit. No problem. Thanks for having me, Billy. Okay. We'll chat later.